One of the key themes here at the World Economic Forum is poverty and trying to uh, bridge that gap between uh, the rich and the poor, income inequality, gender inequality. These are all some of the hot topics that are going to be covered throughout the week. I had the opportunity and the honor to sit down with Professor Mohammed Yunus today. Uh, Mohammed Yunus is the uh, founder of Grameen Bank. He's uh, uh, fondly dubbed as the banker to the poor, and he's the pioneer of microfinancing. He talked to me about why it is so important for leaders to uh, take the right steps to alleviating uh, poverty. And he also spoke to me about how far Grameen Bank has reached in offering uh, credit solutions to the world's poorest people. I uh, try to draw attention to that poverty is not created by the poor people. It's not their fault that they lack something or they're, uh, they're, def they're deficient in something. That's why poverty came. Uh, poverty is something came from outside, imposed on these people. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a uh, imposition from outside. Uh, actually, is our conceptual framework which created poverty. Poverty is in the system, not in the person. So, if you have to address poverty, we have to redesign the system itself. What was the inspiration behind creating Grameen Bank? Because you did not come from a uh, background of privilege. You weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. So how did you conceive the idea of giving so much back to the poor? And I saw the loan sharking in the village next to the university campus. Uh, loan sharks giving tiny loans and taking care, getting the uh, poor people uh, under their control, controlling everything they have because they give the money as a loan. And it's such an ugly thing to see how uh, one human being can be uh, so cruel to another human being. And you see it very face to face. It's not you're reading in the book, it's right there. So you feel terrible to that you have to witness such a thing. Mm. Uh, and it's such an entrenched system of loan sharking. You don't see any possibility of changing anything like that. Suddenly it came to my mind I can change the system in this village. It's not a big problem for me. I may not be able to solve the global problem, but I can solve the problem here. And the idea was, why don't I lend the money myself? Mm -hmm. Then they will come to me and I'll lend the money. It will be nice loans, so no string attached. Were you ever concerned about the poor people repaying you uh, in a timely fashion, if at all? At that point, I, did, I was not. I was more trying to solve the problem. I just wanted to give the money out of my own pocket. So I started doing that, and it became very popular. Everybody wanted to come and take money from me because it's so easy, so it's simple, mm -hmm. and there's no exploitative term, terms in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just started spreading beyond the village to other villages. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the bank because I'm running out of my money because I'm lending all the money to these people. Mm -hmm. I said, why don't you lend the money because uh, they're taking the money. They said, bank cannot lend this poor people. It's impossible to do that. I said, no, it's not impossible. It can be done. So I had a big battle. Uh, for months, this battle went on. They will not open the door, and I'm still paying money for myself. Then finally, I resolved that, offering myself as a guarantor. I said, I'll sign all your papers. You give the money. If somebody doesn't pay, I'll pay. Uh, so it's my risk. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, bank accepted that, take me as a guarantor, and started lending money. And that was the beginning of the whole thing. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And the more it worked, the more excited I got. So ultimately created a bank out of it, a small, tiny little bank called Gameen Bank. Mm -hmm. Today that bank has grown to a big, big bank in Bangladesh. We have mm -hmm. eight and a half million borrowers now mm -hmm. in Gameen Bank. And 97% are women. And the bank is owned by the borrowers. Mm -hmm. What do you say to criticisms of microfinancing that it has created a lot of uh, credit bubbles around the world? This came because some people who got attracted to microfinance they thought this is a good opportunity to make money. Mm. We started microcredit not to make money for ourselves. Mm. Uh, I had no intention of making one penny out of microcredit program. I ne never have a share in that or never interested to get any profit out of that. So it was a social business for me, social business the way I defined it, mm. non-dividend company mm. to solve the human problem. That's how we designed it as a non-dividend company, it will not give anybody any dividend. So mm -hmm. forget about personally benefiting from that. Mm -hmm. 
But other people, when it spread, they wanted to make money. They said it's a quick way to make money. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what led to the bubbles and everything, because they wanted to grow big, they wanted to persuade people, mm -hmm. here's the money, you can give it, I can take, give you the money. Mm -hmm. So overlaps became, lots of other people came to take a piece of that money. Mm -hmm. uh, so the bubble came from that. Grameen Bank has uh, started microfinancing programs in New York. Did people laugh at you at the idea of uh, starting these programs in the United States? Well, in the beginning, we had a lot of resistance. People say, oh, you're uh, not uh, correct to say that it will be uh, useful in the United States. The United mm -hmm. States is a very rich country. Mm -hmm. We don't have any poor people. There's uh, social programs. There are lots of social programs, so who needs you? And everybody has a credit card. Nobody needs money. I said, you're wrong. Just look at your um, uh, pay the lending business. Mm -hmm. It's a thriving business all over the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the poor people who borrow from the loan sharks like uh, pay the lenders. Mm -hmm. And interest rate is 500%, 1,000%, 2,000%. Mm -hmm. So if you can have this kind of program, uh, you need, desperately you need mm -hmm. a microcredit program like Grameen Bank. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, already, you have all the symptoms why you need that. And this started in 2008, January. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, six branches in New York City mm -hmm. with over 20,000 borrowers, all women, 100% women. Mm -hmm. And average loan is $1,500. Mm -hmm. And repayment rate is over 99%, 99.4%. So there we have Professor Mohammed Yunus talking to us about the importance of bridging the gap between the world's rich and the world's poor. And he's not the only person that's going to be really pushing the agenda of poverty and income inequality this week. In fact, later this week, I have an exclusive interview with World Bank President Jim Yong Kim, and who will also be addressing a lot of these themes and poverty issues. Uh, Phil, you've got a very interesting interview tomorrow. Ariana Huffington, right? Yeah, it should be fun. I mean, she's very well respected in the media community. She's also a leader in terms of women. We'll talk about gender inequality. We'll talk about corporate responsibility as well. Trace, thank you very much. There's much more to come. The World Economic Forum, the official meetings actually begin tomorrow. On top of the list will be corporate responsibility. We'll also look into what's happening with Europe after years of neglect and stress for investors. It's finally getting back on track. That will be a key theme. We'll also look at investment opportunities, looking at Africa as well, where the money's coming from and where the money's going from all over the world into Africa. And a reminder that all this material from Davos, Switzerland, can be found on our website. Write it down. It's cctv-america.tv. We will also have the interviews that you're watching with our world leaders and newsmakers and including behind-the-scenes photo. Again, that is cctv-america.tv. And don't forget, if you're on Twitter, you can follow us. You can follow CCTV. You can follow Tracy and I. We'll be tweeting, as we have been, all week long.